Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Gran Turismo 7 Daily AC Race and Strategy Guide. We're in the Group 3 machinery once again, but we're heading off to the Nürburgring 24-hour layout. Possibly not a surprise given the real Nürburgring 24-hour race was held at the weekend just before the Monday that this race goes live. But we're doing two laps around the 24 hour layout. We've got tie wear at times one, fuel at times one. We've got the racing hard, the racing intermediate, and the racing wet tires all available. There's no mandatory rules on the tires. BOP is on, damage is light, it's a rolling start, and slipstream is real. And yes, you probably maybe guessed from those settings that this one is looking like it's going to be a race featuring some dynamic weather like we had at Spa with the Group 3 cars and the Group 4 cars beforehand and also the Group 4 cars at Le Mans so it looks like it will probably very much be a carbon copy of the settings for that one of course we can have no way of knowing how the weather is going to work out but there is a very strong indication that dynamic weather is going to feature so in terms of car choice, there is an ongoing time trial at the Nordschleife at the moment. And the car at the very top of that is the BRZ from Subaru with the McLaren 650S up there as well. Now I don't fancy being in a BRZ round that long straight towards the end of the race. So I'm not sure how good it'll be in race trim. I suspect the Supra, the GTR and the Genesis X that we're using at Red Bull Ring will be probably the go-to cars in race trim. But it does remain to be seen what will be the best car round here. Now this is my 7 point guide to try and help you get some decent results around this combination. So point number 1 to get a decent result is check that weather at the warm up. So when you go into the warm up section, go into the car, go through the multifunction display and see how the weather is looking. Now it will have to be a very very wet track and look like there's going to be a sustained period of wet track for you to start on the intermediates or the wet tyres but it will give you a hint at what that weather is doing at the start and help you to choose your tyres so hopefully you've chosen the right tyres your next task point number two is to survive turns one and two now they are a bit of a diver's paradise they're very tight it's very easy to get spun round here no matter how careful you are no matter how good you are you're at the mercy of the drivers behind you so yeah, if you survive turns one and two, the next task is to survive the rest of lap one. Now, there's no strategy in this one. There's no tyres or fuel to worry about. It's just a flat-out sprint. Drive the car as fast as you can, as safe as you can, and make sure you get round lap one in one piece. So hopefully you've made it round lap one in one piece. Point number four is check that weather again at the end of lap one. So it's only two laps around the Nürburgring 24 hour layout. Obviously it's an eight and a bit minute lap. So you've only got one opportunity to make that pit stop. You've only got one decision really to make. So as you come down the straight, check that weather, see what it's doing. If it's looking like it's going to be an absolute deluge, you have to consider you're going to come into the pits and put some intermediate tyres on. If there's nothing doing like there is on the radar at the moment for me, then of course you're just going to drive past the pits and carry on into lap two. So point number five is make a decision on that pit stop. Are you making the stop or not? As I said, no weather in sight for me here, so we're going to carry on into lap two. Bit of a strange thing does happen here though with the weather radar because just after we start lap 2 we go from a dry track to apparently a wet track. Now the, the track doesn't actually have any moisture on it at all going by the indicator in the bottom left hand corner but yeah a little bit of a strange bug. A little bit of rain does come in over the course of the lap but nothing that actually really affects the track so yeah this hopefully that's the, not a bug that appears in, uh, in sport mode when we're doing this race. Now, if you do sort of notice it's a big old sort of deluge of rain coming in, you think, you know what, I'm going to take a risk, I'm going to put on some intermediate tyres. Let's take a look at that pit loss so you have an idea as into how much time you're going to lose. Now, the big problem we had at Spa and Le Mans with the dynamic weather is that the pit stops were in the region of around 35 to 40 seconds. So it did really have to be extreme weather to make it worth your while to then come into the pits and risk losing that time. It's a much more sensible 21 seconds-ish here at the Nürburgring. So if you do decide to make that pit stop, come in for a set of intermediate tyres, it's not quite the disaster that it is if you get it wrong as it was at some of those other previous races. Now, there had been a decent amount of rain that came down during this second run that I am doing. The track had got pretty wet. We came in for intermediates. Now, it did look like it might have been a mistake. No more rain actually came down over the course of this race, but the track actually remained pretty slippy. 
and a decent level of moisture remained on the indicator in the bottom left hand corner. I think this would have been an extremely tricky track to drive with slick tyres, so something to bear in mind is that the track does seem to dry pretty slowly here at the, the Nordschleife, unlike maybe say Spa and Le Mans where you know, the rain would come down, sod the track, and or sod in the track, and then dry very quickly. It definitely seems to dry a little bit slower here at the Nordschleife. And point number seven is finish the race. Survive lap two and finish the race. Hopefully you've made all the right decisions on the tyres and the weather. You've not binned the car. You've not been caught up in an accident in turn one and two and hopefully you can over at the start finish line for a half decent result but that's pretty much it for this one it's all about the dynamic weather no strategy in this one it's a case of waiting to see what this weather is going to do in the race will it start dry finish wet start wet finish dry i think it'll be very much like when we went to Le Mans and spa where the vast majority of races will actually just play out fairly normal either completely dry or the odd shower will come in that has very little effect on the race, but there will be that odd occasion where the rain will come down in such a manner that taking a risk on that pit stop will be the way to go. And with the pit loss not being quite so extreme, it's definitely got a better chance of working than it did in maybe some of the previous dynamic races, especially with the track looking like it doesn't dry anywhere near as quickly. But it should be good fun, it should be chaos, There'll be the odd race will become absolutely farcical, will be you know, a minute into the second lap and absolutely the rain will come down like cats and dogs and we'll be spinning around for days trying to get the car to the end. So I do expect a little bit of farcical racing in this one as well, but it should be good fun. It's not a race that would particularly interest me, to be honest with you, if it wasn't for that dynamic weather. I like the track, but I'm not a big fan of racing on it. It's kind of a similar opinion to what a lot of people do have when it comes to this track and racing. But yeah, it should be fun. We'll see be live streaming that a couple of times over the course of the week, so do join me for that if you can. But hope you've enjoyed the video, found it useful some way, shape or form. If you have, please hit that like button, please hit that subscribe button. And thank you very much for watching. Goodbye now.